Ready? Everyone ready? <clears throat> ready. Yes. And we're going to go all the way through, right? We're just going to go all the way through. Okay. Have fun. Have fun. Have fun, guys. Interior. <laughs> Interior, 1212, ensconced way. Kitchen, 1992, morning. Child Roman is sitting at a kitchen table with two open texts. Child Roman is sitting at a kitchen table with two open textbooks and a pile of papers in front of him. His mother, in curlers, sits across from him, smoking a cigarette and holding a ruler. Come on, hurry the F up, Child Roman. I don't have all day. And even if I did, I certainly wouldn't spend it with the likes of you. Now answer the question, what's the square root of nine? I said, what's the square root of nine? I don't know. Here's the clue. Whack, whack, whack. She slaps his hand with a ruler three times. Ow. I hit you three times. Does that help? Three times. Hitting me with a ruler was a clue? Yes. Uh, well, then, on the, in that case, uh, I don't know, 12 inches? Yeah, Roman, you idiot. The square root of nine is 12 inches. Whack. She slaps his hand again. Ow. Let's move on to literature. I'm on a time crunch here. Why can't I just go to regular school? Oh, believe me, I wish I could send you away for the day, but your daddy decided to die. And now we're in hiding, Roman, because your daddy did bad things. So blame him. Now open your copy of the Pelican Brief. Why am I reading the Pelican Brief? Because I'm reading the Pelican Brief. Did you answer the question sheet for Did you answer the question sheet for chapters one through ten that I gave you? Yes. He pulls out a piece of paper and hands it to her. Well, I don't want to see it. There's spoilers in there. I'm only in chapter three. Okay, I guess. She checks her watch. Oh, shit. Class over. She butts her cigarette out frantically and starts to put the school supplies away. My sensei is coming over. I need to defend my thesis for my yellow belt. I literally defend it from him. I stand in front of it, and he tries to destroy it. But I use martial arts to defend it. You understand? No, I, I want it. Why are you defending a thesis <laughs> and getting a yellow belt? Like, I don't... I don't. That's oh, just do what do I'm doing. For a belt? Look, yeah. what's your thesis about, though? Katas, I don't know. Shut the fuck up. Let's get you <laughs> hidden away, all right? Come on. Back in the water tank with you. No, please, not the water tank. I hate it in there. Yeah, come on. Roman's mother picks him up and drags him to a closet door, opens it, and starts to heave him into the water tank. The <clears throat> hot water tank. <clears throat> no, no, stop. Stop fighting it. It's for your own good. Oh, if I was your real mother, I'd disown you. What? <laughs> She throws him in the tank. Now stay quiet. No, wait. Slam. She shuts the lid on his head, trapping him in the hot water tank. It's suddenly incredibly quiet and completely dark. All we can hear are child Roman's panic breaths. <sighs> and... Get up, get down, get your head out of the clouds. When nobody gets you, don't let it get you down. With friends like this, you're getting the business. And interior, Roman's vault, day. Roman is asleep. Roman is asleep, tossing and turning in his little bed. He wakes up, bolting upright. No, 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 not the hot water tank, no! <sighs> he looks around the bank vault that he has turned into his little bedroom. Oh, thank God, it was just a dream. We hear a loud knocking on the other side of the vault's door. Roman, are you in there? It looks like World War Z out here. Roman starts to wake up even further. O Oliver? God damn it, Roman. Open this door! Roman stands up and stumbles over to the door. Oliver, is that you? I thought you were on a secret mission. Roman, thank God you're in there. Oh, it's good to hear your voice, Oliver. A and also, this is a vault. I live in a vault. The door only opens from the outside. Oh, right. So how do I get in again? Just put in the combination and then spin that ship's steering wheel thingy, you know? Right, right. We, we hear Oliver entering a combination. Okay, let's see here. Oh, shit. He enters yeah. another one. Okay. Shit. He enters another one. Oh, let me try this one. Now, oh, shit. Okay. And let me, another. Let me try it again. Okay, just put this here. <laughs> oh, shit. Damn it. And one more. Okay, I'm going to try this. Let me try it. Oh, shit. It's not Oliver, okay. did you forget the combination? Yes. Okay, it's seven, no, eight. No, no, wait, 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 wait. Don't tell me the number. Use the secret riddle I have in place as a mnemonic device to remember the actual combination of numbers, or as I like to call it, the combination. Oliver, please, just let me tell you the combination. No, so you can Roman, get it. please. This is a security measure I put in place. I will not be talked out of it by a boomer like you. <laughs> Stop <laughs> calling me a boomer. You're, okay, You're fine. the boomer. Okay, fine. What's the secret? 
Why was six afraid of seven? Oh, right. Jeez. Why was it? Okay. I forgot this was a doozy. Oh, boy. Diva told Oliver to make the security riddle a legitimate freaking doozy. Okay. Oh, boy. Let me try this here. We hear Oliver opening up a backpack. Okay. What are you doing so, out there? Just getting some paper to make some initial notes on this real doozy of a riddle that I it's invented. It's 789. The answer is 789. Just open the door. It's 789. Right. The combination 789? That's right. 789. Okay, right. Okay. I'll just put that in here. So. Shit, it's not okay. working. Did you forget it already? Yeah, what was okay, it again? It's seven, eight, nine. Seven, right, okay. Sequentially, okay. seven, eight, nine. Okay, just try that again. He yeah. enters it. There is a click. Aha! The ship's steering wheel thingy spins, and Oliver pulls and pushes the heavy door open. Seeing Roman, he launches into a bear hug. Roman! Oliver, I'm so glad you're home. Me too, old boy. Me too. Where were you? In good time, my dear boy. I shall tell you in good time. But first, maybe you tell me about this bad time. What happened in here? And whom is the human being sleeping on the couch all curled up like a contented little dog? Yeah. It's, uh... It's a bit of a long story. And we cut to... Flashback! You ready, everyone? Interior. Tracy's $3 store. Night. We find ourselves back in the previous episode. At the exact moment, Tracy had morphed into a terrifying werewolf. The werewolf stands, panting and drooling in front of Roman. Now that's from Twilight. Awkward silence. What? What? You're doing a Twilight joke? Well, I thought you were just about to eat me. I wanted to go out zinging. Roman! What? I'm a werewolf! Oh, yeah, shit, fuck, yeah, wow, you're what we are for... For how long have you been a werewolf? Tracy the werewolf is confused. My whole life... Why aren't you freaking out right now? I locked us in and then I transformed into a giant werewolf. Yeah, I guess, but then, but then you started talking like Tracy, like in your normal voice. Like, <laughs> kind of like Teen Wolf. What's Teen Wolf? You've never seen Teen Wolf? Ugh, is it like a flavor of Old Spice shower gel? No, it is not a flavor of... Shower Joe. It's a kick-ass movie starring Michael J. Fox from Burnaby. Ever heard of him? It's about a werewolf who is a teen and becomes better at basketball because he is a werewolf. Well, I'm terrible at basketball. And I can't watch movies about a werewolf. It's too close to home. Same reason doctors don't watch ER and my mom doesn't watch Desperate Housewives. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. Well, but like, it's more the fact that you're like calmly talking to me in your normal voice after you've turned into a werewolf. Well, how should I sound? Like a, like a werewolf. I am a fucking werewolf! I know, I know, I know, I know. And so, you're not gonna eat me? No, I don't do that. I just break stuff. And I, I howl a bit. No. So how long have, have, you, have you been a werewolf for? It started when I hit puberty. Oh, just like Teen Wolf! Oh my god, I'm not fucking Teen Wolf! Fine, sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry. And ever since then, when I get really angry, or when the moon is full, I just wolf out. You know? You I just, what? I wolf out, dude. I just wolf the fuck out. She points to her fur and fangs. You refer to it as wolfing out? Yeah, why? That's what Teen Wolf says! Tracy the <sighs> werewolf grabs Roman by his collar and slams him against the wall. Stop it with the Teen Wolf stuff. You stop it with the Teen Wolf stuff. You're doing so much Teen Wolf stuff. She releases him. Ugh. Anyway, sorry about all the damage I've done to your place. That old bank was abandoned for years. It became my punching bank, if you will. Yeah. Uh, place to get my frustrations out when I just wolfed out. Okay, fine. That's it. So you turn into a werewolf. Yeah, I wolf out. Yeah. Okay, I just, fine. Every So you wolf out every time the moon is full and when you get really mad? Yes, it's tied to the moon and to my rage. Hmm. And, and what kind of stuff makes you really, really mad then? <laughs> Politicians that think they can control my body. Yeah. People who clap when airplane land. Um, people, who, people who who clap when airplanes land. But mostly the fact that I'm a werewolf. It's very hard to make friends. Huh. That's a vicious circle. If you're mad about being a werewolf, it turns into a werewolf. Yeah. And, and and then why did you lock us in before, like just before you wolfed out? Tracy the werewolf unlocks the front door. I thought you were gonna freak out and bolt. I wanted to keep you here while I explained. Roman walks up to Tracy the werewolf and puts his hand on her shoulder. <laughs> you don't scare me, freak. <laughs> Underneath all that hair, you're still a dork, Scott. 
Is that a fucking Teen Wolf quote? Yeah, it is the best I can think of because there's a lot of homophobia in the screenplay. Why do you like this movie? Look, look, look. Why don't you just come over, okay? You're already wolfed out. Why don't you come over and, and trash our already trash place, okay? Get it out of your system. I can lock myself in, in my room that used to be the bank vault, and I won't hear a thing. In the morning, we can make eggs. What do you say? Okay, sure. Thanks. Okay. And we cut to... Out of flashback. Interior, Roman's vault. Moments later, Roman finishes telling Oliver the trouble with Tracy. So, then there you have it. The person curled up, sleeping in a dog-like pose is Tracy. She must have tucked herself out and fell asleep. Hmm, a werewolf next door, eh? Interesting. And you just let her come over here and trash our place. Interesting. Why? I don't know. She's a really nice werewolf. Plus, she, she mostly just flipped stuff over, and she said she'd help clean up, so... Plus, 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 I thought having a werewolf as a teammate would prove beneficial to us, like in Teen Wolf. The fuck is a Teen Wolf? Has no one seen Teen Wolf? It was a very popular movie. Hmm, a werewolf next door. Very interesting story, Roman. Perhaps you'd like to hear mine. Hear your, hear your what? My story! The story of where I've been. I've been gone 20 fortnights. You were only gone a month. I know. If you add up the average time of one Fortnite video game session and multiply that by 20, it works out to be about a month. Okay, tell your story, Oliver. Just tell your story. Okay, boomer. Flashback! Interior, airport, day. Oliver is dressed up adventure style, pulling his wheeled suitcase behind him. Ticket in hand, he is ready to fly. He walks with a determined gait through the airport. I breezed through security. I used your old trick, Roman, of being a sniveling little coward to the DSA agent. It worked! And that was good because I needed to make my flight. Where was I going? There'll be time to answer that question later. Like at the end of the story. For now, we're in the airport. And it's important we do start here because that's where it all started. The airport. Where I had just breezed through security the way you do by sniveling to a TSA agent. And that was good, <laughs> because I needed to make my flight, which was important I do. Where was I going? As I said before, we aren't there yet. We're here at the airport. I had just breezed through security, which was good. And then I stopped. I couldn't believe it. I forgot to pack a lunch. And now my only options were an overpacked sandwich or a plate of Cinnabons walked up to the newsstand in front of me, taking a look at the sandwiches that were for sale. Finding nothing to my fancy, I asked the person at the counter if they had any other flavors of sandwich in the back. That's right, flavors of sandwiches. That's what you call it, a sandwich flavor. They said they would go check the, them out, but they, didn't, but they didn't seem hopeful. While the sales clerk was gone, I flipped through one of the magazines they had on sale, free of charge. By the way, you can do that. It's free. It was The Economist, and I didn't understand a word of it. I replaced it and went over to look at the rack of plane gadgets gadgets. Should I get a new neck pillow? I mean, it was going to be a long flight. Haha. Where was I going? Not yet. For now, it was neck pillows. Oliver! Then... And we cut to... Out of the flashback. Interior Roman's vault moments later. Interior Roman's vault moments later. Roman is yelling at Oliver, who is deep in his story about the airport. Oliver, could we please just skip to the part where you tell me where you've been? Ah! Roman! I see, you'll see, I see you're still the arch enemy of a good time. I missed you. In my own way. Where have you been? Glad you asked, Roman, because it concerns you directly. I've been... Before Oliver can finish his sentence, Tracy walks in. Oh, morning. Oliver jumps. <laughs> Werewolf! Werewolf. She points to herself and chuckles. No one else does. <laughs> Tracy. <laughs> my name is Tracy. Hi. She puts out her hand for Oliver to shake. He slaps it away. No, thank you. My friend Roman and I were in the middle of an important business conversation and you weren't invited. Oliver, please, Tracy is our neighbor. It's cool, I get it. I'm I'm a lot. Um, tell you what, I'm gonna clean up your place and then get out of your hair. Tracy, you don't have to go. No, no, it's cool. It's not the best introduction to old Trace. I just need to sit down for a second. I have like a terrible fucking werewolf hangover. Tracy sits down and rubs her head. Oh, <sighs> sorry, were, were we being too loud? No, it's a werewolf hangover, so it's like the exact opposite of a drinking hangover. Loud noises are good. Silence is bad. Oh, okay. Yeah, I have like a great headache, like a crazy pillow fight that's going on inside my head. Okay, uh, well, do you want some coffee? No, I do not need coffee. I need like the opposite of coffee. Like I need like a Greek salad. 
I I don't think that that's what the opposite of coffee is. I think I could make some good arguments that the opposite Does of coffee is. Anyone want to hear where I've been? Yes. Yes, that's what I just asked you. Well, I can't talk about it with her in the room. Oliver! It's cool. I'll, I'll go. Tracy stands slowly. No, Oliver, anything you want to say to me, you can say in front of Tracy. There aren't any secrets between us. What? After a month of knowing each other, that's a bit much, Roman. I agree, Roman. Maybe that's, like, a bit familiar where we're new friends. Oh, stop sucking up, Wolfie. New friends? You revealed you were a werewolf to me. Mm, I still think you've overstepped here. Oh, come on. I was in South America spelunking in a mystical cave to excavate a relic belonging to your late father, Roman. The room falls quiet. My dad. Yes, and I need your help. I was so close to getting it back, but I ran into some obstacles I couldn't overcome. See... It's in a cave deep underground, and it's full of water. Very cramped, very small, full of water, warm water, like a, like a water tank. Roman jumps up. Oliver, you know that's my phobia. What? I have a fear of tight spaces underwater. Independently, I'm fine with both of those things, tight spaces and water. But if you mix a cave or a confined space with water, I can't. I, I, I just can't. He shivers. Uh-huh. Don't you remember? I told you that was my greatest fear because my evil stepmom would lock me in the hot water tank. Huh. For the life of me, I don't remember you ever telling me that. I do remember talking to a cashier at a Walgreens in 1994. I bought a Crystal Snickers, remember those? After clear soda came out, clear chocolate was all the rage. It was like eating a little glass bottom boat. You could see all the ingredients. It was great. Roman glares at Oliver. Why did you bring up that Crystal Snickers memory? Just something I remember. Why couldn't you get the relic out of the cave yourself? No, oh, thanks for your condescending and hurtful question, you mangy mutt! Oliver! I don't like her! Maybe she could help! I don't see how she could. I need someone who starts out human size so they can fit in the, in the cave. I don't see how she could. I need someone who starts out human size so they can fit in the cave with me. Then I need the same someone to turn freakishly strong and move a gigantic boulder that has fallen on top of the crate that holds the relic. Oliver. What? You just fu- you just described Tracy. Okay, she starts out human-sized, then turns into a freakishly strong werewolf. You can change on command? Yeah, if you get me mad enough, and I'm like Professor Emeritus of getting angry. <laughs> Professor Emeritus. So, so, like, you've retired and you teach for free now? Oh, is that what that means? Look, my whole life I've always wanted to be, um, sorry. Oh, is that what that means? Anyway, my whole life I've always wanted to put being a werewolf to good use. If I can wolf out and help somebody, I, that would mean a lot to me. Wolf out? Hmm, that's a pretty cool term. Thank you, I made it up myself. Then I don't like it anymore. Ugh, listen, I think that everyone in this room knows that I'm your only option here. Roman told me all about your dumb adventures, and I want to go on one. Come on, put me in, coach. Hmm, put me in, coach. That's a pretty cool term. Thank you, I made that one up, too. Okay, 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 let's just, okay, let's just, let's just, we're all going to go together, let's talk logistics, okay? Where specifically are we going, Oliver? He takes a deep breath. The Delta of the Amazon River. That's still a very large area. And we cut to... Interior, the office, night. The abandoned bank office. Oliver, Tracy, and Roman stand around a makeshift obstacle... Oliver, Tracy, and Roman stand around a makeshift obstacle course constructed out of styrofoam coolers, fishing line, and plastic spatulas. Oliver is holding a clipboard and stopwatch and wearing a whistle. As you can see, I've constructed an exact replica of the underwater cave that we will be diving into. Roman, these turkey basters represent stalagmites and these party hats are stalactites. Or is it the other way around? I never remember which one's which. It, it, that's actually easy, actually. So stalactites, they hold on tight. And stalagmites, they push up with all their might. No, that doesn't work because stalagmites could hold on with all their might and stalactites can push up tight. How do you push up tight? I'll push you up tight. Oliver pushes Roman up tight. Hey, stop it! Um, hey, did you guys take this stuff from my store without paying for it? Of course, you weren't there to you weren't there to pay. 
By the way, nothing in your $3 store is $3, just I've, letting you know that. I've been helping you, that's why I wasn't there. I've been helping you, that's why I wasn't there. <laughs> Tracy approaches Oliver. Oliver, don't piss me off, or I swear to God, I'll wolf out and I'll eat your ass. Oh, I would love for you to wolf out Princess Useless, then you'd at least be helpful. She turns into a werewolf, picks Oliver up by his collar, and slams him against the wall, pinning him there. Roar! <laughs> <laughs> ah, sorry, sorry, please, don't eat my ass. Don't eat my ass. <laughs> the wolf drops Oliver on the ground and turns back into Tracy. Oof. Sorry. Sorry about that. I, it's been a long day. I Oliver hate stands up and Oliver stands up and brushes himself off. No need to be sorry. It's exactly the kind of pizzazz I'm going to need from you when we're in that cave. That superhuman strength, those fast reflexes and reactions, that sweet, sweet breath. He likes breath. I'm sorry. So what are we doing here? What are we doing here, Oliver? Not we, Roman. Us. What are us doing here? No, actually, we was right. What are we doing here? We are going to run a little simulation, or as I call it, a stimulation. A stimulating simulation. Stop it. Just stop. Stop it. Stop it. You're going to go on a run. Just stop it. Tell us what we're doing specifically. Running this course over and over until we know it like the back of our hands. You got it? I don't even know what the back of my hand looks like. Roman closes his eyes. (laughs) Bet they're soft. Please, Roman, read our workplace etiquette forms. They're, you're in violation of, I think, all of them right now. Stop. They're, they're actually pretty rough from always licking them and then cleaning my face. That doesn't sound like a cat thing. That's definitely not a wolf thing. That's that. Sorry. That's a cat thing. That's not a wolf thing. It's not anything to do with either. It's a Tracy thing. I'll tell you what the back of your hands look like. You have a small scar on the middle knuckle of your right hand and a freckle under your left pinky. Oh, my God. Tracy looks, sorry. Tracy looks at the back of her hands. How did you know that? Because you're always flipping me off with both hands. Oh, really? She flips him off with both hands. Oh, yeah. That feels that feels good. I like that. <laughs> okay, let's do this. This is a dry run of a very wet thing. Roman, you'll be positioned here at the cave entrance holding the rope. When we tug on it three times like this, pull us in. If we tug four times, it means do not pull us in because we are not ready. What? Why can't it be one tug if you need to be pulled in and otherwise I won't pull you? Because... Idiot. One tug means there's a cop coming. Be cool. Why would we ever need that as a tug system? Oh, my God. It's Why would there be standard a cop there? rope tug translation, Roman. All right? It's as widely used as Morse code and leet speak. Okay, boomer? Read the manual. <laughs> Stop it. What? Fine. What? Fine. Your other job is to monitor our oxygen levels with this device. If we get to 50%, start pulling up. Okay, got it. Let the stimulation begin. <laughs> Oliver and Tracy amble around the obstacle course while Roman hangs back. Oliver barks odors like a boxing coach. Move! Left turn! Forward 20 yards! Move! Up! Up! Now! Turn! Doing good! We Okay, we can't hear that, Roman. Please use rope code. Doing good is five tugs and then a half jerk. You, on the other hand, are a full jerk who could use five tugs. I was just trying to be encouraging. Okay. What do you mean by five tugs? Guys, please. <laughs> We made it to the end. What do we do when we're here? Okay. This is a chamber that has air in it. We'll be able to breathe normally. Also, this is where you wolf out and get the package. What's in the package anyway? Gold? Cocaine? Haunted gold? Haunted cocaine? None of your goddamn business! Well, Oliver, chill out already. You chill out, Roman. Once we are done here, she is out. You hear me? Gone. Out of what? Your cool fucking club? I'm not even in the club. Damn right you're not. Yes, she is. She's in the club. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. (laughs) Enough. 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 Just stop it. But seriously, is it gold or nose gold? That's what I call cocaine. That's what I call cocaine. Nose gold. What did you say? What did you say, Roman? I call call cocaine nose gold. What? Is it nose gold? What are you saying? Nose gold. He calls cocaine nose gold. Oh, I get it now. You'll see soon enough, but... We've got a plane to catch in. Let me see here. He checks his watch. 75 hours. We better get some rest. And we cut to X. Exterior. A campfire in the jungle near the Amazon Delta. Night. Oliver, Tracy, and Roman are sitting around a roaring fire. There are sounds of the jungle all around them. Are we okay to camp here? 
If you mean, do we have a p -p -p permit, nerd? The answer is yes. He pulls out a permit. Why'd you do the nerd bit? When did you get a permit? Online, before I left. Roman grabs the paper out of Oliver's hand. Now, this is a, yeah, this is a receipt for a pizza. Yes, I know. For one of my permits. I'm on the permanent pizza points plan with Domino's. And when we get a free pie, it's called a permit. Or a pie mitt. Nope, nope, nope. You are lying okay. from the okay. beginning. I, I, you got me all riled straight up. Straight up. Okay, stop it. Call me a Peugeot Model 505 because I'm about to blow a gasket. Oh, hell yeah. 505 sucked. Worst Peugeot ever. Give me a 205 any day. Oliver is taken aback. Uh, yo, you know. You, you know P P Peugeot's? You're my favorite car ever. Best cars on the planet. T try the universe. Oliver takes a deep breath in, getting ready to launch into a Peugeot rant, but then catches himself as he remembers he doesn't like Tracy. What were you going to say? Never mind. Oliver suddenly douses the campfire with water. They are now in complete darkness. We should get some day tomorrow. And today. We should get some rest now. Big day tomorrow. Get some rest! Get to your tents, everyone. Oliver skulks off. <laughs> Can't see anything now. I was cooking my dinner on that fire. No. He'll warm up to you. Sorry. So, uh, what do you think this relic has to do with your dad? Eh, I don't really know. I didn't know him. He died when I was a very young actor. I'm sorry. That's okay. What about your parents? My dad was a vampire and my mom was a Frankenstein. Really? <laughs> no, not really, you fucking dolt. I'm not a monster. Okay, so so you know about the monsters, but not about Teen Wolf? <laughs> she stands and picks up whatever cold, wet food was grilling on the fire. I'm going to go eat my sandwich in bed. She starts to walk off. Hey, uh, uh, Tracy! She turns. Thanks for, um, for coming, for helping. Hey, friggin' free trip to the Amazon, no brainer. Night, night. She walks off. Oliver walks on. Roman, did I hear right? Is this a free trip? And we cut to interior, a dank cave, day. Tracy, Roman, and Oliver approach a small pond in the cave. They drop their backpacks. Oliver and Tracy start to put on their scuba gear. Roman begins to set up his little monitoring. Roman begins to set up his little monitoring station. Okay, I'm all set here. I've got everything monitored. Oxygen levels, heart rate, and there's something else called an FF? That's our fear factor. It tells you how scared we are. Okay, well, we might have to recalibrate because you're at a 9 out of 10, Oliver. No, 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 no. That's very normal. I walk around at most days at about a 7 or an 8 FF, you know? I'm always very, very scared. Okay, well, I, everything makes a lot more sense now that you say that. I operate best when I'm at high peak FF. Senses are heightened. Bowels are empty for a fast getaway. Can we get going? I have to be uh, like, literally anywhere else after this. Right, let's dive. They jump into the water, leaving Oliver all alone in the cave. They jump into the water, leaving Roman all alone in the cave. Just the sound of the monitor beeping can be heard. Oliver's head pops back up. He pulls his goggles off and uh, talks to Roman. Roman, you should be perfectly safe up here, but one thing. I think, Roman, <clears throat> you should be perfectly safe up here, but one thing. I think we set up your dumb little station next to an eyeless and earless cave troll nest. Their skin is clear, so you can see their organs like a, um... Like a crystal Snickers. Remember those? Anyway, their tongues are their primary sense organs. They detect movement by taste. So stay perfectly still and try not to give out any tastes while we're gone. What? Give out tastes? Don't worry, you'll be fine as long as there's no movement or tastes. Oliver puts on his goggles and dives back under. The rope attached to them begins to uncoil quickly. Roman spots it. Oh shit, that's a bunch of movement. Just then, two scary, clear cave trolls pop out of a nest flicking their tongues and moving like modern dancers around the cave. We are cave troll. We are cave troll. We sense movement. And taste tastes. Oh, shit. Also, of course you taste taste. That's what you do with taste. You taste them. And we cut to interior underwater cave day. We see a sequence of Oliver and Tracy swimming through the underwater caves. Things are going smoothly, just like the drill. Or the stimulation. Then they reach an unfamiliar branching and paths in the cave. Both of them pause. This wasn't in the stimulation. Oliver makes a series of hand signals at Tracy. Tracy shrugs and shakes her head. Oliver does the same sequence of hand signals. Tracy shrugs again. Frustrated, Oliver takes out his fa Frustrated, Oliver takes off his face mask and gurgle yells at Tracy. Asking you if you know which way to go. Tracy shrugs again. Maybe you understood me. 
They choose a path and swim through. Back to interior, a dank cave, continuous. The two crick... The two cave trolls are slowly closing in on Roman, who's doing his best to stay still and not give off any tastes. He talks to them, trying and failing not to move his mouth. Stay back! Stay back! We sensed movement. And tastes. We know there is a man in here. Either that or a large worm. We will find you. And taste you. Come out, come out, man. Or large worm. They flick their tongues, searching for movement and tastes. And we jump to... Interior, underwater cave, continuous. Oliver and Tracy swim along and reach a dead end in the cave. They've gone the wrong way. We see a close-up of Oliver's oxygen gauge. It's already a little below 50%. We jump back to... Interior, a dead cave, continuous. The trolls are almost touching Roman, who is pressed against the cold, wet cave wall. The trolls flick their tongues, narrowly missing his sweating face. The worm is close. Yes, I can taste a pasty worm in the air. Stop Our it. tongues taste movement. And taste tastes. The worm tastes of failure. And regret. He tastes of sadness. And fear. Roman starts to seethe with anger and recognition because they're describing him. <laughs> Just then, across the cave, the monitor starts to beep. Then a voice speaks from the machine. Oxygen levels at less than 50%. Oh, crap. And we cut back to interior underwater cave, continuous. Oliver and Tracy have doubled back to the correct tunnel and begin to swim through it. They find their air hole and step up into the small chamber and remove their masks. Finally, we made it! Oliver heads for a giant boulder and tries to move it. (sighs) budged. The package is just behind this big rock. If only I was 10% stronger, I'd move it myself. Tracy is looking at her oxygen meter. We only have 25% of our oxygen to get... We're not going to be able to get back. He checks his... Oliver checks his gauge. Mm, You're right. Possibly for the first time in your entire life. It seems we wasted too much time getting lost in the cave system. Oliver grabs the rope attached to them and starts doing a series of tugs and jerks. Whatever you're trying to tell Roman, there's no way he's going to understand you. Right again. You're on a roll. I was just saying goodbye to him. You will surely die too. Those clear cave trolls will lick him to death if we don't return soon. What?! Suddenly, Tracy wolfs out! Holy moly! Or should I say, howly moly, because of the wolf. She she picks him up with one arm and with the other smashes the cave wall. A large metal container tumbles out of the rubble. The word verba scum is printed on the side. That's it! That's the package! Wolf Tracy grabs the container and dives into the water. Oliver frantically puts his goggles and mask on as the two of them disappear underneath. And we cut back to interior, a dank cave, continuous. The trolls have wrestled Roman to the ground, licking him. He tastes of worm. Let us lick him to death. Stop calling me a worm! He struggles, but to no avail. The two trolls are too powerful for him. We are too powerful. The beeping from the monitor intensifies on the other side of the cave. Oxygen levels depleted. No! Damn it, troll, get off! Just then, whoosh! Wolf Tracy jumps out of the water, flipping like a dolphin and landing near Roman at the trolls. She deposits Oliver and the package to the side with the two Popeye... She deposits Oliver and the package to the side and with two Popeye-esque punches, wallops the trolls, sending them running for their lives. She transforms back to Tracy as Roman regains his composure. (sighs) Oh my god, thank you, thank you, thank you so much, thank you. You saved my life. I was dead for sure. He hugs Tracy. I've never wolfed out that hard before. I heard you were in peril and I just couldn't control it. Maybe we are closer friends than new friends. Yeah. Also, I was brave too. He turns to the metal container. Also, a little help here. The three of them heave the container upright. Oliver pulls a crowbar out of his bag. Now remember, once I open this, I can never close it again. Are you sure you're ready for all, for, uh, to see this? Oh my god, of course, yes, I thought, fu- yes, we can't, yes, of course, yes. Just open it, Oliver, before I wolf out again. All right, here goes. Oliver jams the crowbar in the lid of the container and pries it off. The lid slams to the cave ground, the sand, the sound echoing down the tunnels. Icy fog bellows out of the container. Then, the body of a man, naked and pale, slumps out of the container. He rolls over, coming to as if from a long sleep. He looks up at the three of them. His face is unmistakable. Dad? Um, Roman, it's way too soon to meet your parents. What? The end! The end! Get up, get down, get your head out of the clouds. Nobody gets you, don't let it 
get you down with friends like this. You're getting the business. Comedy systems.